go with that. Good morning, everyone. Um, as you've heard, my name is Susan Norton, and I currently work as staff nurse on the Caro Ward, which is a neurointensive care unit. I've been asked to speak to you about my journey in the NHS, all 51 years of it, in just 10 minutes. I will try. First of all, I'm going to give you a date. The year is 1967. The Beatles were in the charts with Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. Harold Wilson was a British Prime Minister. Sandy Shaw won the Eurovision Song Contest uh, with Puppet on a String. Dr. Christian Barnard performed the first successful human-to-human -human heart transplant, and the NHS was just 19 years old. <laughs> in the September of this year, I was, just, oh, I was only just 20, and I started as a nursing auxiliary at Tynmouth Hospital. I worked there for three years and I loved every moment of it. One day, I was asked to report to Matron. I thought, oh Lord, I'm in trouble. But no, I was far from it. She asked me if I'd considered doing my nurse training. She said I was so young and had a good attitude towards nursing and it would be a waste to stay. I told her I didn't think I was good enough as maths was never my strong point and a nursing career was for clever people. She told me she would help me with some extra tuition, and if I applied to some hospitals, she would help me with the application form. I applied to Plymouth General and was so pleased to put an interview. The interview took all day, and I had to sit two papers, one in the morning and one in the afternoon. I was so pleased to be accepted, and that day changed my life. I started my nurse training in May 1970. There were three hospitals that did training, Greenbank, Freedom Fields, and Devonport. I worked in all three. We learned on the job, but before we were let loose on the wards, we had a six-week induction at the School of Nursing. During this time, we learned how to bed bath, talk to patients, take observations, how to feed dependent patients and about diet. We had to pass a nasogastric tube on each other um, and practice uh, giving injections via an orange, not very scientific and not very PC. But we didn't know any different, but I did refuse the nasogastric procedure hmm. after gagging and my eyes running. We were assigned to a nurse tutor who came down to the wards to assess us and help us. We had a workbook for competencies. Each time we did a procedure correctly, we were signed off. I still have mine as a relic. My first ward was a busy surgical 28-bedded Nightingale ward at Green Bank Hospital. We had no electronic gadgets, everything was done manually. The temperature was taken with a mercury thermometer and the pulse. And we took the pulse and counted it with a fog walk into our uniform. The blood pressure was taken with a stethoscope and a sigma manometer. These observations were taken quarter hourly for post-operative patients. If patients required oxygen, then a huge oxygen cylinder, the size of a torpedo, was wheeled across creaking floors to the patient. No piped oxygen, no pulse oximetry, no arterial blood gases either, just observed the shortness of breath and pallor. Intravenous fluids came in, a bot in bottles and we had to count the drips per minute to get the correct rate as there were no drip counting machines. So as you can tell, when we finished what round of observations, it was time to start again. We also had a lot of cleaning to do, but we even managed to serve breakfast at the end of the night, so you can t tell it was extremely busy. We went home exhausted. Eight nights were like that were very daunting. We worked long shifts and a 42-hour week, and one and a half days off a week. I think my salary, which was a government bursary, was about £39 a month. But if you chose to live in the nurse's home, accommodation was free of charge. Day, day shifts were just as arduous. Sister ruled the ward, along with a staff nurse, uh, a third-year student, a state-enrolled nurse, a first-year student maybe, and a nursing auxiliary. Patients were in hospital for a long time and mostly dependent on nursing care. It's a wonder they made such good recoveries as the surgeries were really radical and brutal, not like the keyhole surgery and less invasive procedures we have today. In our final year, we would take charge of a ward, especially at night, overseen by a night sister or a staff nurse from an adjoining ward. This would prepare us for the future. This is when we learned our ward management. Nursing was was very task orientated and not a great deal of communication as everything went through the staff nurse and relayed to the sister. Etiquette played a big part and it was expected for junior staff to open, open doors to allow superiors through first. As a student, we were always last, along with the uh, nursing auxiliaries. 
uh, we washed the patients and made eggs before the daily ward rounds, which were a very grand affair. No one was allowed to talk when, this, when the consultants came round, and they only spoke to sister. We would disappear to the zoo to keep out of trouble. You could hear a pin drop. How times have changed. We did have lovely uniforms. We wore starched aprons, a nurse's hat, a starched color, collar that rubbed, polished shoes and stockings, and a heavy navy blue cape with a bright red li lining. I felt so proud to wear it, and I love wearing my qualified belt with a silver buckle. Despite all the hard work, we had many happy moments. We sang carols on Christmas Eve. Going around every ward, we wore our capes and carried lanterns, complete with lit candles. No health and safety back then. <laughs> Christmas Day saw the registrar or the consultant come in in fancy dress and carve the turkey for Christmas lunch. I remember one dressed up as a fairy in a tutu with a wand and crown, was in much amusement. After I qualified, I had a job for a few months in oncology as I applied for a job in the IT, in the new ITU at Freedom Fields. The new NIP, new NIP was open, due to be open that later that year, and I was always interested in trauma. During my training, I had worked on another busy ward at Freedom Fields Ward 1. It had a four-bedded side ward for seriously ill patients who needed intensive care. I really enjoyed working there, and this was a green light for me at the beginning of my ITU career. And despite the dinosaur East Radcliffe ventilators, which consisted of what looked like a pair of bellows and a bicycle chain, they were big and noisy and took up a lot of space. But despite all the lack of equipment, we managed really well. Now computers tell you everything you need to know. During the time on ITU, I learned so much, not only about complex diseases, trauma, etc., but about empathy towards relatives and family and recognizing their dis despair and stress that they were going through it and supporting them through difficult times. This still continues. In 1976, I had a short break when I had my family and I returned to work on the nurse bank, working in all wards in the hospital, but I missed ITU. In 1981, I worked on Ward 2, specializing in neurosurgery. I was completely fascinated with it, and still am. The operations were long, taking all day. The surgeons were so skilled. CT technology was only just coming to the hospital. We really did have fairly basic equipment, so the powers of observation were crucial. Touch, feel, and of course, bright torch. In the 1980s, care plans were introduced. Individualized care was planned and given with patients' participation. During the 90s, neurosurgery moved to the new Derford Hospital and Ward 2 became Morgate Ward. Eventually, we were allocated a small bedded unit and this was the start of newer ITU as we know it. In 2002, I had a change in my career pathway. I did my conversion from a state enrolled nurse to a registered nurse, which the trust funded, and I will always be grateful. I graduated at St. Alfred's University in Winchester, and we were the first set of nurses to graduate and had our ceremony at the beautiful Winchester Cathedral. It was a very, very moving and extremely proud moment for me and my family, something we will never forget. And now into, 19, into 2008, when we moved to Pencara Intensive Care, a custom-built unit. We, along with Morgate, are the major trauma center for neurosurgery and spinal injuries. I absolutely love it. It's hard work, but very rewarding. We have good times and bad, but we are always, always support one another. I have kept updated with courses and from my peers. I share my knowledge, and I'm motivated by the work and, and my colleagues. During, during the job, I love. I was once asked by a colleague, how come you know so much? I replied, well, I do love the job I do. I'm really interested, so I read a lot, and I draw from my experience. What more can I say? I've been really blessed to have been supported past and, with past and present ward managers, Sister Justine Fryer, Senior Sister Debbie Redding, and Cheryl McVeigh, and of course the fantastic team I work with, which are my work family, and so much more. We enjoy a good social life, which is really important. Gone are the dinosaur ventilators. We have top of the range equipment and a fantastic medical and education team that deal with courses and help us with new equipment. Who wouldn't be motivated? Over the many years, I've met wonderful people, patients, relatives, and staff, and have forged lifelong friendships. We've laughed, cried, but always tried our best and pulled together no matter what. In this 17th year of the NHS, we are all too aware of the bad press. It's not all bad. The staff are loyal and hardworking and sometimes don't get the recognition they deserve. But we aren't in it for that. Yes, we'd like more money, 
and I can't remember the last time we had a pay rise. Most people have a mortgage and family to support, not like the nurses back in the past who were mostly single and devoted themselves to the job. But it is a great job and we do make a difference, whether you see it as a vocation or a profession. My advice for students, stay true to yourself. Being a nurse is hard work, your legs will hurt and you'll be tired and sometimes you may feel like giving up, but there are ups and downs in any job. Maintain a sense of humour, you will need it. Choose a job that you enjoy and that you can make a difference in, not just the first one that's offered. Remember, never look down on anyone. You might meet them on their way up. Be kind. Everyone learns at a different rate, but it is lifelong learning. Not everything will go your way. It takes many people to make a good team, from the housekeepers to the doctors. We all need each other. Do your best, that's all we can ask. Good luck on your journey. I hope you enjoy it as much as I have during my 51 years. And hopefully I can do a few more. Thank you for inviting me and I hope you enjoyed my talk. I'm sorry, sorry if I gabbled, but I only had 10 minutes to prove it. Thank you. Thank you.